we'll try and edit that so, out. We've got a tree to come over here, the one in the middle. Uh, we're actually waiting for some gear to turn up, so we're doing all the work around the climbing um, that we can do first, which is all the pole soaring and felling, and I'd probably rather do that one last, once everything is out of the way, but we can make it work now. Try and get it between these two trees if it gets caught up. It's not a big deal, it's not a big tree, it's no risk. Uh, we can cut it out, but it should just snap off coming through. So we needed to pull it to make sure it wouldn't go near the house or get too stuck up high in that tree there. So what we're doing is just setting up a two to one system. And as you can see, we didn't have a an anchor out here. So we just put the chipper in the right spot. We'll use the, uh, the frame of the chipper. All right, so we'll set that up now. Since we've set up enough of this, isn't it? It's been a while. So, uh, what exactly are we setting up? Uh, I'm setting up a what I call a pig rig. Pig rig. And what a lot of other people would just call a two to one system. Do you have your microphone? That's sharp. That's sharp. What we'll do find a section that's not sharp and doesn't have any cords, which is here. No, that's no good. This one's better. Do a couple of wraps around it to reduce the friction on any single point. Okay. So who taught you the pig rig? Uh, Swiftwater Rescue. Oh, and Vertical Rock Climbing Rescue. So all these techniques are pretty much used throughout the industry uh, in, in different industries as well. So. All slight variations, but you know, all ropes, all forces, uh, they're all the same until you get into rope access people and they're the, they're like engineers, you just don't want to talk to them. Everything you do is wrong. Uh, but yeah, Switchwater Rescue. So when you're dealing with forces of water in, um, when you're dealing with forces of water in whitewater trying to get boats and crews against water, you've got to have some pretty serious mechanical advantage and, it, and it's very 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 strong stuff so same as trees but trees is more quick fast bang more shock loading whereas swift water rescue is kind of slow planned powerful rigging uh okay so we've got that set up there we'll just do a just do a bowline here it's not going to be moving around too much. I'm not even going to bother doing a stop and order or anything. It's just one pull. Put our pulley on here. Rope. So what do you call this fell? Fell? Uh, probably should wait for the right gear and wait to do everything else. Kind of fell. But it's all right. Uh, I was actually going to climb it, but I think we can just get it over pretty easy. It's just going to save us a bit of time and a bit of money. And if you, if there's no real heightened risk, just get it done. Um, this is where just working with good people in the past has, has taught a lot of tree workers good skills. So more people you work with, more people you learn off, the better you'll... Uh... Actually, I'll do a clam heist. Clam heist is always better for this because a clem heist is a one directional knot and it holds very well one direction. Whereas the English uh, is very good at both directions but not quite as good as the clem heist. So it's only for one pull, I'm not gonna be adjusting it so I'm just gonna put a hell of a lot of wraps in it. And what I wanna do, I wanna make sure the loop of this clem heist is right at the top and it's dressed correctly because if this loop is not too long and it's right at the top like this then when I actually put the other rope through it, it creates a bit of a leverage effect so try and tighten that up even more to show you it's, it's gonna hold I'm not too fussed about it but just for just a cinematic effect you can kind of get it to pull down from the top of the knot a bit more. So now it grabs. Uh, okay, so we get this. Probably should put a girth hitch in it, but it's not going to be moving around too much. And we forgot a pulley. 
You don't need a pulley with this, it'll still work with just a, a carabiner. So, I do actually have another pulley on my harness, which I forgot about. So, we'll use that. It's great. Very powerful, very strong little pulleys. And we'll hook this on here. Only downside with these, oh, is that. They don't sit very well on some carabiners because of the rigid, because of the rigid arms on them. There is a really good pulley. I like the one that's dynamic and spins around and it has the two ends close together because it doesn't take up much room on the carabiner. And it's actually stronger than a lot of the ones of this design, but these particular ones are pretty good. This holds MBS 50 kilonewtons. It's a lot for a little fella. So, I'll still use it. I'll just put a different carabiner on it. Just a little alloy. It's fine for this, what we're doing. Okay, where are we going? That there, that there. Capture this one. And we're off to the races. So we we'll get Mark to pull this. You can come up there. Marcus Aurelius. So if we want to adjust it, we can pull this way up here, which we won't need to, but better to have it, not need it, than to need it, not have it. Ugh. All right. So what we don't have, we don't have a progress capture because it's going over. Um, there's enough pull in this to get the thing down to the ground, even if I just back cut it. So we don't need a progress capture, too complicated. We'll just get into it. So pull this. When you're pulling a tree, never release the pressure. Once you apply pressure, it's all continuous and it's all accumulated. You don't stop. You don't, oh, sorry, you stop, but you don't let go and you never shake. Cool. Um, basically, I'll just get you to get it tight and then just hold it, never wrap around your hand. Never put it behind your body like that. Um, I'll just get you to get it tight and then hold it and then don't pull anymore until you see me tell you to because I might want to get out of there. No, it's not a big deal with this one, but good practice when we get dangerous big ones. Oh, I need to get a so we've got a two to one rope system. It's going to be pulling that way away from the house. We do have the house just here. So I'm putting some wedges in it. I don't think we need them, but you know, when the insurance company comes asking and they'll say, why don't you put wedges in it? We could say we at least did it was a complete fold of the tree and argue our way out of it. So I don't really need them, but I'm going to put them in. Better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them. This will go over, no worries. It might get caught up a little bit in these, uh, these trees here, but that's all good. All right. Warm this up. And pop a scarf cut in, just a regular standard scarf cut. this tree it's leaning back this way towards the house towards me I want to get some wedges in and it's not a very fat tree so if I cut in far enough to get the wedges in the tree's already not got much of a hinge wood already so I'm just going to do a quarter cut on the dangerous side so I can at least get some wedges in so I'll do a quarter cut put two 
wedges in, maybe one. And then I'll go to the safe side and finish my cut and put the remaining wedge in. Beautiful. So, I've been caught before <laughs> with steel wedges, and I've been caught, if you look back at some of the early videos, I've nicked a steel wedge. So, I went by the book this time. I cut actually more than this out for the top quarter, and I left it very thin because I didn't want to go back to that side. All this is for is to stop it crushing down, this side. And then this side, to avoid hitting my steel wedges, I just went by the book, which is a step down underneath. You never undercut your wedges, but you go a step down lower. And you get this, this snap out along the middle here. And there's a little bit more holding wood on this side. All right. So that's a, a wedged quarter cup that no one died on. <laughs>